You can use ChatGPT as a practice partner for debates. Maybe you have an upcoming conversation at work and you know that some people won't see things your way. Maybe you need to give a presentation. Maybe you have a talk to give. Maybe there's an issue that you're just not quite sure about. Maybe you know your opinion, but you're not quite sure how to express yourself. Well, you can practice with ChatGPT. And in this video, I'm going to give you an example of what that could look like. Okay, so I'm going to give you a prompt, but just remember, prompts are flexible, so you can try variations of this, and I encourage you to play around to use AI tools like ChatGPT in the way that you need, that is useful for you. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments. And now let's get into it. One thing I like to do is use ChatGPT as a debate partner. When I'm trying to work through a difficult idea or I'm trying to practice explaining my thoughts about something, right? It can be a great way to, uh, it can be a great way to, number one, have somebody push back against you, but also have a format to just talk about what you think, to refine your ideas. And so we're just gonna try this very simply. We could do this as a live conversation, but we're just gonna try this as a simple text conversation for now so that we can see everything. So we'll start with a prompt. Let me paste in the prompt. What you wanna do is be very, very clear about what you're trying to accomplish with, um, with your prompt. So here's what I'm going to use. I want you to take on the role of a challenging debate partner. The debate should be interactive. Each of us will share our views in a persuasive way, asking uh, challenging questions and poking holes in the other person's arguments. We will debate the topic of whether students uh, should be able to use generative AI to study and do their homework. My position, students should be able to use generative AI. Your position, students should not be able to use generative AI. <laughs> the irony, oh, the irony of that. I'm forcing ChatGPT, uh, oh, I have a typo here. I am forcing ChatGPT to <laughs> make the argument that it should not be used. <laughs> uh, okay, so wait for me to say, let's begin before starting this debate. If you understand, say, I understand. So what, what we should see is I understand, okay? All right, now, if I were doing this on the app, what I would do is now open up the app and actually you know what? Maybe I can still do it on the app. I would go to, on my, on my app, I would go to that chat where I had started that conversation. And it's called Debate Students. And I would then start a conversation, right? And have the debate. So let's do that. Why don't we do that? The primary concern with students using generative AI tools for educational purposes is the potential for these technologies to hinder the development of critical thinking and problem solving skills. Education isn't just about finding answers. It's about understanding the processes and methods needed to arrive at those answers. Moreover, the use of generative AI for academic tasks can raise ethical concerns, particularly around academic integrity, it blurs the lines between the student's own work and the work produced by AI, potentially leading to issues with plagiarism and originality. Schools and universities value the development of individual thought and the ability to articulate one's ideas, both of which could be compromised when students lean too heavily on AI tools. While I think you do have some really good points, the use of generative AI 
is a paradigm shift in the way that people work and study. And so not allowing students to use these tools, to learn how to use these tools, is equivalent to not allowing students to use computers in some sense. We have to let students learn the most cutting edge tools. And when they learn these tools, when they learn how to use them, they will find new ways to be creative, new ways to solve problems, things that we can't even imagine now. So we have to allow technology to progress and we have to allow students to be part of that progression. You bring up an interesting perspective by comparing the integration of generative AI into education with the adoption of computers. It's undeniable that technology evolves and with it, the tools we use in education must also evolve. However, the key difference with generative AI lies in its potential to not just augment, but to replace the learning process in ways that computers did not. Computers have been tools that aid learning, enabling access to information, facilitating the creation of work and enhancing communication. Yet they have largely required direct human input and decision-making to produce outputs. Generative AI, on the other hand, has the capacity to generate outputs based on inputs with minimal human intervention, which raises a critical question. Are we teaching students to leverage technology as a tool, or are we allowing technology to take over the learning process? Adopting cutting edge tools in education is important, but it's equally important to ensure that these tools are integrated in ways that enhance educational outcomes without compromising the development of fundamental skills. The creativity and problem-solving abilities you mention are crucial. However, they should be developed not just in using the tools, but also in understanding the underlying concepts that these tools are applied to. In light of this, how can we ensure that the use of generative AI in education enhances rather than replaces the learning process? How do we maintain a balance between leveraging the capabilities of AI and ensuring that students are not overly reliant on it, thereby preserving academic integrity and the development of critical thinking and problem-solving skills. I think that you have an excellent point in the idea that we would not completely rely on generative AI and AI tools as part of the learning process because that could actually prevent some learning or some types of learning from happening. That said, I think that there is still room in education for generative AI. Maybe, for example, there are classes that teach the fundamentals of writing, and part of that class requires writing an original essay that does not use these tools. And there has to be a way to make sure that doesn't happen. I see value in that, so I think you have a good point. But I still think that it would be important to include some lessons, some classes that rely heavily on generative AI because only then can we figure out new ways to use it. Only then can we discover all of the possible applications that generative AI has. Again, I go back to the computer example. It's by playing with computers partly in school, but when we're young, that we learn how to build cool applications, that we get excited about coding. It's by using generative AI that we think of doing something we never would have thought of, that we find some kind of application that nobody has ever thought of. So I think there's really a way to balance these in education, and it's not a black and white issue. Your point about incorporating generative AI into the curriculum in a balanced and thoughtful manner is well taken. <laughs> it's clear that completely sidelining such a powerful tool from the educational process could mean missing out on opportunities for innovation and learning. The yeah. idea of integrating generative AI into certain aspects of education while also maintaining traditional methods of teaching fundamental skills is a compelling approach. 
It acknowledges the value of these tools without undermining the importance of foundational learning processes. Perhaps the solution lies in a hybrid model where generative AI is used to complement and enhance the learning experience rather than replace traditional learning methods. For example, generative AI could be used to provide personalized learning experiences, generate creative prompts for brainstorming sessions, or offer simulations that allow students to explore complex concepts in a more interactive and engaging way. Yeah, Meanwhile, yeah, yeah. traditional assessments and projects can ensure that students are also developing their abilities to think critically, solve problems, and create Amen. original works without undue reliance Heck on yes. AI. For sure. Incorporating ethical considerations and critical thinking about yeah. technology itself into the curriculum could also be invaluable. By teaching students not only how to use generative AI, but also to understand its implications, limitations, and potential biases, we can prepare them to be not just consumers of technology, but also thoughtful critics and innovators. With this approach, the educational system can embrace the benefits of generative AI while also safeguarding against its potential downsides. Would you say that finding the right balance where generative AI is seen as one of many tools in the educational toolkit could address the concerns around its use in education? How might we structure such an educational model to ensure that students are gaining the full spectrum of skills needed for the future? I think we solved it. I mean, together, we just did it. All they need to do is read this chat history, and that's it. Game over. We have solved education in the 21st century. Nice teamwork. Thank you so much. Well done. Bye-bye. All right. There we go. So that was pretty interesting. You know, th this is something, by the way, I do pretty often where I, I do it less with debate and more often with uh, an idea that I have or maybe my comprehension of something that I'm reading. But I often have these sort of long back and forth conversations as a way to push myself to explain stuff that's in my head. Just now in that conversation, I had to come to grips with this idea that yes, there is still a place for traditional skills, traditional writing skills. That's I'm glad I have those and I want people to continue to learn those. And so you get something new, there's a back and forth. You have to really tune the prompt so that it's useful to you because maybe you don't want explanations as long as ChatGPT was using. Well, in the prompt, then you would say, give short, concise arguments explaining your viewpoint and always finish with a question that I can answer, something like that. But there are a lot of ways to structure this, not only using this for debate, but having these live conversations. It really pushes you to use your language skills, to practice organizing your thoughts, to express yourself more clearly, and in the case of a debate, to figure out how to be more persuasive in the moment. Very cool. Again, I use this all the time. If you try it out, let me know how it goes. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and get a free course in the links in the description.